this Wednesday. This week has been flying by. Yeah, it has gone fast. Gone fast. Good stuff happening, though. Can't wait to announce. When you drink a lot of coffee, time goes by real quick. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's that how it is goes. very true. <laughs> All right. Have you been drinking a lot of coffee today, Fonsi? Are you good? Are you caffeinated? Good. Are you yeah. awake? I think I still know this is empty. <laughs> All right. There we go. There we go. The one day we need to show up with like a cowboy hat, it's like <laughs> music, it like instruments, and it's like serenade the people that are watching. <laughs> that would be pretty, pretty what's, funny. What's happening to you? I don't know. I'm pretty congested too. So I think that's that's one of the issues. It's a gut. You got a. Uh... You got a sexy voice, man. You got Appreciate this. it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and here we are tonight. No, no, don't force it. Um, <laughs> all right. I think I'm ready on my end. What's up, everybody? Welcome. Happy Wednesday. Contents Profit Live back. What's up, fans? How La you doing? Live back. Yeah, live back. <laughs> the li we got good. the live back. I'm yeah. actually pretty excited because today I come back into the soccer field. After being injured for a month, let's go. Let's yes. go. I know you're being uh, a crappy goalkeeper uh, all this time. Yeah. You, can't, you haven't been able to, Context, to play. Pulled my calf, couldn't play. I still had games, so I showed up and I was the goalkeeper. Can't do anything. <laughs> can save a goal to save my life. So, <laughs> not, not happening. Yeah. I know. But now I'm stepping back in the field. It's all good. Uh, yesterday we had an incredible call. Uh, announcement coming very, very soon. I thought we were going to be able to do the announcement yesterday, but there's still some details in there. Uh, but stay tuned. Probably the best news that we've had since we launched the show, I think, though. Um, so there, yeah, just, just sure. going just gonna to put it out there. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm ready, Fonsi. Are you ready? I'm absolutely ready. Sounds good. <laughs> we see thumbs up in the back. Uh, all right, cool. Let's make this happen. Oh, oh that's, not the, that's not the lever. Here we go. There we go. We've got hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening you to the Content is before. Profit podcast. Where we talk about entrepreneurship, mindset, and of course, how to turn your content into profit. Ooh, baby, that's right. But most importantly, we are here to have a good time with you. So go to contentsprofit.com to get started today and join the community. Oh, yeah, that was pretty smooth. So smooth. Good I, job. I, I practiced like 20 <laughs> times. I'm glad you did, guys. And today we have an incredible guess we're very excited for today's yes, guest yes and we're talking all about taking over the podcasting world <laughs> oh baby i know wait i think that, I, honestly this is a very general headline now that i <laughs> that i read it but i, I kind of wanted to do like a little gameplay in there with you know the name of his podcast too i know, I know. but at the same time he's so knowledgeable about the podcasting world that we can, this conversation can just go whatever and i know it's going to be extremely valuable i know so keep an eye on that on that clock phone because you keep asking questions and then you know we stay here 24 hours so i'm just gonna put that out there but uh tell me do we have a sponsor today funds indeed we do good question good sir and You're today's welcome. sponsor is your own the biz bros yes we sponsor our own podcast with content momentum mm. and you might be asking yourself what is content momentum? Well, if you produce a long form piece of content just like this one that you're listening to or watching and you need a fractional content team to help you out and produce daily consistent content, we are here to help out. So slide in the DMs at Beast Bros Co. on Facebook, I just on heard, Instagram. Um, I just heard content and then this. Oh, yeah, beautiful. That sounds, that's that sounds delicious. <laughs> uh, guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, go ahead and follow the show on your favorite platform because every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, awesome episodes are dropping with incredible value so you can move your business and life forward. That is right. And if today's guest help you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. Thank you. That's right. We are back with another epic guest. We connected with today's guest after sliding <laughs> in his DMs, and he's one of the responsible ones for growing one of our favorite podcasts to two million monthly downloads. Let's that is go. Right. Even though he hosts his own podcast, How to Take Over the World, which is an absolute gem, yes. he seems to be more of a behind-the-scenes guy, the guy in the chair, 
the mastermind behind the madness. <laughs> That's right. And he's not just the mastermind behind a two million dollar, uh, two million downloads per month podcast. He's the mastermind behind Cas Caspian Studios, a podcast as a service company specifically designed for B 2 B marketing teams. Conclusion: He knows what he's talking mm. about. Please welcome host of how to take over the world podcast the alexander the great of podcasting and possibly the best podcast producer has ever graced this earth ben ben Wilson! <laughs> man guys i don't know what to say about that intro that was too generous too generous <laughs> ben, ben, we, it's only fair it's yeah, only fair, it's only fair. I, you I have just... no idea how happy we are to have you here in the show, man. I'm not kidding. Like, how to take over the world and my first million are like the top two podcasts in our rotation. And we're like, we need to have the mastermind behind all this in the show. Yeah, we've been. Well, uh, go ahead, sorry. But <laughs> I was gonna say the the warm feelings go both ways because that's the best 30 seconds of a podcast, the fir best first 30 <laughs> seconds of podcast I've ever been on. That was uh, that was incredible. I feel like a king right now. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> well, uh, you are indeed Alexander the Great. So <laughs> we're like, um, so yeah, Ben. You know, I wanna I wanna tell the story a little bit on like obviously how how I, I guess first got in touch with you. And uh, by the way, thank you for accepting the invitation. You know, but we've been massive fans of my first million uh, for for a while now. And then I love how they interact and then st started to like bring you in. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the strategy also on the content. Like we, we love a lot of YouTube stuff and it's like these characters, right? Within like this ecosystem. And then you showed up and then they put one of your episodes in there. And I was mm -hmm. like, what is this? This is awesome. So then when you came came on with your own episode uh, onto their platform, I immediately went into and checked out their episodes and I fell in love with it, with how you tell a story, right? And so me down the down the down the show, we can talk a little bit about your your creation, your process on, on how you do this. But I've never, I've never read like a history book. I've never <laughs> like I, I fell asleep in my history classes. And how you tell these stories and how you relate it to the day to day, especially a little bit on, you know, that that spice in the entrepreneurship world and like people that want to like make a difference. It really attracted me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is so cool and like very different styles of shows, but at the same time, really, really high quality and highly engaging. So I'm like, we have to talk to this guy. And you know, I heard that you're our first Twitter DM uh connection may i add in 245 episodes so <laughs> you got you got the crown for that so thank you i just wanted to ch like give a little bit of context on how we got in, in touch with you and it's so awesome and so thank you for being here yeah absolutely <laughs> glad to be here and excited for the conversation sweet awesome ben so for those that don't know who ben is right maybe they don't know a little bit about your podcast or you know what all those fat, even though they should know at this point who the Alexander the Great of podcasting <laughs> is, right? Why don't you share a little bit about your story? How did you get to where you are right now? Like maybe how do you, you know, fall in love with with podcasting and this craft of storytelling? Yeah. So I mean, I don't know how deep you want to go, but actually the story starts in a very funny place, which was I actually started my career in management consulting. I uh, did that for two and a half years, then did tech marketing. And then I had a trainer I was working with at, uh, at the gym and he said, you have a really good voice. Have you ever thought about doing radio? And I said, nah, like, I don't think, first of all, I know that's not what I do for a living. Second of all, I don't think there's a lot of money in it. And he goes, well, my dad works in radio. You should talk to him about it. And so I said, okay, whatever. And, um, so I talked to his dad and, um, his dad said, yeah, you have a great voice. You should consider like doing something in it if you have anything to say. By the way, I'm retiring. Do you want all my equipment? I was like, you know, I don't think I'm actually going to do this, but yeah, I'll take your equipment. So I have all I had all this nice like professional radio equipment sitting around. And uh, then a few years later, I'm I'm listening to the Tim Ferriss show. I don't know if you guys like Tim Ferriss, but I was listening to the Tim Ferriss show, and he just had a few episodes in a row where I was just like wasn't thrilled about the guests, and I thought, well, who do I wish Tim Ferriss could interview? And I realized, oh, it's people that aren't alive. Uh, I wish you could go back in time and interview like Alexander the Great or Napoleon or Caesar or, or Steve Jobs or something like that. Um, and so I thought, well, you know, I could do that. 
uh, I, I could start that podcast. I, you know, I was reading a biography at the time. And so I, I thought, well, I could make that. And I realized, oh, I have this radio equipment this guy gave me. So like, why don't mm-hmm. I just re- try recording it and see how it goes? So I started it because I was doing the reading anyway, and it seemed like it'd be fun and interesting. Um, from there, uh, I got married. My wife was going to law school. I was moving across the country. So I needed a, a new job. And uh, I had started this podcast, you know, just for fun in my spare time. I sent it to a few studios and said, hey, just listen to this. If you think it's any good, let me know if you want me to work for you. And one of them got back to me and was like, hey, we actually love your show. Do you want to come work for us? So that was a company called Mission. I started working for them. And then from there, I left with one of their executives to start Caspian Studios. And then um, eventually the guys at My First Million, uh, Sam Parr heard how to take over the world and uh he's been a big big booster of it they play it in their feed sometimes and so that's how i got involved with them he just randomly found it in the podcasting app so that's how i got to where i am today that's the short version of it that's awesome and i love like the the coincidence in life you know (laughs) that you your trainer was this guy and he's like dude you got a a nice voice right there and then all like this sort of events you pulled it out and it's absolutely amazing by the way, the first episode that they shared about you, I think it was the Thomas Alba Edison. That was so good. I'm telling you, I was hooked to that thing. I listened, I, I think I listened to it a few times now and I, I listened to my podcast on air. I don't know if you're familiar with that uh, player, but you can take like air quotes, what they call air quotes, which is um, you press a button and then it kind of like segments like 30 seconds or one minute or two minutes. And if it saves it on my phone and then I can just go back and like listen to those like golden nuggets, man, that is absolutely amazing. I was like, I've never heard such an engaging story like on a podcast like this besides business wars, probably I was like, this is the level of business wars and just the way that you probably, I was just thinking, how did this guy did the research for this thing? How long did it take to pull the whole story together? Right? Like he is a master of his craft. And I do want to dig into that a little Although, bit. Before you before you ask a question, oh, yeah. uh, there, there's two elements then that you said in there like uh, that we, we mentioned the show before is why not me, right? Like I, I think sometimes we go out there into the marketplace and uh, we don't find the solution, whether that's a business or even like on content side of things, right? Like where we love like individual framework, like what is your own framework of creation? So the fact that you like took action and be like, let's actually jump in and su- do this. And then going and being proactive about the opportunity that, mm. that, that you went and got, you're like, you know, I'm actually going to go and reach out to these people and see where the opportunity le- le- uh, lays, lays, lies, lays. Yeah. yeah. Either one. English I think either one, I think either one okay. works. <laughs> Good. Um, so I think, I think those two things are, are key, right? Because we share also in our show, like people are like, how do you guys get three guests a week? I'm like, we just go ask. <laughs> so that's like it's such an easy question, right? But I, I want to highlight it because sometimes that can get like uh, shoveled under everything else. Um, so super awesome. Okay. All right. Now, now it's my turn to ask the question. <laughs> Before we go into like the research and all that thing that I, I think is, it's a must, right? For especially for people that want to produce high quality podcasts. I'm extremely curious now on your time admission. Cause I do know of that network. You know, we've done research obviously to see what networks we would like to eventually work with, right? All this stuff. And they produce very high quality podcasts as well. So I'm curious how was that transition for you and that learning process? Maybe what were some of the the top things that you learn with them? that now you're applying at your own Caspian Studios. Yeah, I mean, some of the things, I mean, I came in and I was just a guy reading books, speaking into a microphone, right? And so I didn't know anything about how to structure the project of Mm. a podcast, right? How, How to take it from conception to completion. And more than that, like how to keep a schedule, right? How to deliver on time. I think that was probably the number one thing I learned is, um, you know, there's an art to podcast production, to any kind of content production, right? But there's mm-hmm. also like the science of like, you need to be a professional, you know, you need to put on your hard hat and grab your lunch pail and like, you need to show up and yeah. things need to go out on time, right? And so I learned that when 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 I was mm-hmm. on the mission. Yeah, Interesting. So, so, so for you, um, 
you know, that, that, that process, what did it entail? Like, what are the elements? Like, for example, for us, um, when we decided to first start something was a, a podcast called Bruce and Bros. And it was <laughs> debriefing this challenge that we were going through the time at 10 PM at night with a beer, right? With two DSLRs. And there was so much friction because we had to set up for 30 minutes in Fonzie's room. It looked like a porn set. And, <laughs> you know, Fonzie's girlfriend will walk in and we're like, what are you guys doing? And we're like, oh, we're shooting a podcast. And like, uh, you know, what? Well, good thing you guys are wearing t-shirts. Like this looks like something <laughs> very different. And we recorded five episodes, right? And it, it was just a lot of friction. And we're like, oh crap, now we got to edit all this uh, into the video, or the audio things. And then we have to distribute and then we have to promote it. And it's just the mental challenge of going through that uh, what happened was after five recordings, we were like, no more. And then we spent a whole year without publishing. And then we decided to start Content is Profit, right, like right when the pandemic hit. And it changed everything because one of the things that helped us was we removed all the friction. So what we're recording right now, this is how it's going to end up. And we structure ahead of time. So uh, for us, that was like the secret recipe to, to, to produce and stay consistent. And it can get better, absolutely, 100%. But for us, the production and consistency is super important. So for you, like what are some tips or, or or frameworks that you might recommend to somebody that it's there, it's starting a show, it's starting their own platform. How can they get the ball moving quickly? Yeah. Um, so a, a few things. The first thing I would say is um, like the great thing about podcasting is is it's easy to do. Like uh, sometimes people overemphasize that. Like actually there are things that are hard about it. Right. But at the same time, like spinning up a prototype, getting a couple episodes is, mm. is like pretty simple and you don't need to commit your life to this right away. Right. Like it's okay to produce a couple episodes. Like you guys said, like you started things up and then like, didn't really like start releasing for a year or whatever. Like if you um, want if it doesn't sound right, like I think more people should orient themselves towards like, actually, I'm going to start 10 podcasts. And then if one of them sounds really good when I, when I produce yeah. it, I'm going to keep producing it. So like take away that fear of failure is what I would say. Like failure is good. You want to at least be out there. You want to be trying. Um, and that was one of the things I learned also at Mission and later with Caspian is like, not every show's a hit. And guess what? That's okay. You know, um, you, you got to yeah. still go out there and like be taking swings because um, you never know yeah. what's going to connect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we like to don't call it failures anymore. It's just learning, right? At the right. end of the day, which is one of those, Samples, you yeah. know, yeah, those steps that you might misplace. You're just learning something new, taking new samples and then course correcting. So that is extremely important. Um, I love the, the whole thing, managing the projects, right? Uh, I think always having a plan can be a big advantage. I think when we first started this, we did not have a plan. It was like, oh, no. let's just start recording, go live, see where we go. <laughs> and then on episode 20, we're like, well, we don't have anything else to say. What about we invite one of our good friends and we talk with him? And that led to, huh, the people that we're bringing into the show are people that we would love to work with. Like, what an incredible tool to build relationships, to build your network, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how, for us, it became about now creating that bigger plan. Like, okay, let's do it three times a week. We're going to bring this type of guest and we're going to leverage that for uh, for the business, right? So now I know you're in the B2B podcasting space and you guys, I check your site, I check some of this uh, podcast that you guys are doing at Caspian and they're like extremely high quality. And I'm curious, right? Because for what we've been exposed, it's, it's very difficult to grow the audience size. It's very challenging. And we have Steph Smith, right, in the, the previous episode. And she was talking about like, yes, it is very challenging, even for some businesses. Like she said, I would even discourage them to actually start <laughs> a podcast, right? So I'm curious to hear from you. What are those reasons or what are, What's a good scenario that a, a business should start a podcast with? Like, for what reasons should they start a podcast? Yeah. Um, look, I, I think, you, you know, for example, at Caspian, we had a show that was about edge computing, right? All about edge computing. And it never got more than a couple thousand downloads 
per episode. And it was a huge success because there just aren't that many people who are, who are interested in edge computing. Like it was for yeah. hardcore technologists who are working on edge computing. I don't even like, I produce the show. I don't even fully know what edge computing is. <laughs> I'm like, I can't explain it all to you. Right. <laughs> and so that's the first thing is like, um, you have to know the scope of what you're going for. Um, and you, you have to be, and then the other thing is like, if it's a B2B podcast, you should probably either be in your target market. Like you should be trying to target people like yourself, or if not, you should talk a lot to people who are in your target market and ask them like, A, what do they want to hear? But not only what do they want to hear, but what do they want to hear that they're not currently hearing. So for example, mm -hmm. one show that we produced, Demand Gen Visionaries, is really interesting. The whole show uh, like has been made by one question that we ask every time. Mm -hmm. It's because it's it's for specifically demand gen marketers. So we went and we talked to all these demand gen marketers and we asked them like was the if you could know one thing mm -hmm. from from great demand gen marketers, what would you want to know? And they were like at first they were like honestly like there is enough content out there about like demand gen marketing. Like there's not anything else I want to hear. And then we heard, we had one person go, you know, though, if there's one thing I could know, you could probably never ask this, but I'd like to know what's their budget. What do they actually spend money on? Mm -hmm. And we started asking people like, would you want to know that? And everyone was like, oh yeah. Well, like if you could find that out. Yeah, absolutely. Like I would, of course I would want to know that. No one, no one ever says that though. And so we made that our key focus of like, hey, well, if you come on the show, you don't have to break down every number, but we're going to ask you what your top three budget items are that you actually spend money on that you would never cut. And so people come on and they share that and mm. demand gen marketers love it because uh, that's like the one thing that you never hear is like, what do you actually spend money on? What would you never cut? And so I think um, uh, that, that's another framework we use. Yes, Ooh, that is that is an amazing that, question. That's very powerful. I, I'm gonna pull a re reverse <laughs> unicorn right now, Ben, and I'm gonna ask you, you know, if if you and I'm guessing you might actually listen to a podcast about podcasting, right? Let's say content is profit, and you there is something that you want to know that you are not hearing. What would it be? <laughs> like, what is that question about podcasting that maybe nobody is asking? Um, what would I want to know about podcasting that I don't already hear? Um, well, I think, um, I, I think that there is a lack of content around, um, how to craft good podcast narrative. Um, mm. because most podcasters do interview style and there's a ton of content. A lot of people have written a lot about how to be a good interviewer. Yeah. And there's a lot about how to write well. There's just not that much about how to write well, specifically for podcasting, like how to craft mm. a narrative. Yeah. And yeah. that is, you know, I, I'm in a unique space in that I do have how to take over the world. I do have a, a scripted podcast and most people aren't scripted. Um, yeah. But I think even if you're not scripted, that idea of like, how do I craft a narrative out of this? Like not just a, you know, not just an interview, but how do I actually tell it as a story would be helpful to a lot of podcasters. Absolutely. Well, I love, I love that, how you phrase that. And actually one of our first challenges when we started our podcast was the questionnaire on my, like, what if in the middle of the conversation, we don't have anything else to add. We don't have anything else to say, right? And we actually, so we have a what we call the cheat sheet right here that we're looking at it right now. And, you know, there's this, it's called the Epiphany Bridge uh, Framework, right? To tell stories. I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, direct response marketing world. Uh, jo uh, I think it's Joseph Campbell. He has a Hero of the Thousand uh, Journeys, I think it is called. And this framework, the Epiphany Bridge uh, Framework is based on that right so we wrote those questions a, a, a in here. good example a good example could be have you watched the movie cars yeah well, but i was gonna dive a little bit into the framework so i know but, you have a little bit of context okay but you can you can do that in just a second but it will be like if you look like behind 
like that's the structure of that movie. So what happens, like the episodes that happen in that movie is the hero's journey. And as soon as you start seeing it, Hitch is another one, another good example. Then you're like, oh my gosh, all these movies are using this framework of narrative. And they're like, okay, sweet. Um, that's how we like saw it for the first time. And we're like, oh, okay, that's cool. So those are the questions that Fonzie. Yeah, so the, the, it's pretty much, and I'm going to run super fast through this, but it's the backstory, right? Then the external and internal desires of the character. Then the wall, right? What is that challenge that they face that they almost you know, quit for their dream. Then comes the epiphany. What is that one thing that they realize that they could do to achieve their dreams? And then they build a plan. And then it's conflict and they go back. Conflict and action, conflict and action. And then eventually they achieve what they want. But with that achievement, there's a transformation, right? So for example, in the, the cars example that my brother is sharing, uh, Liney McQueen, I think it's, and you you can actually tell this better because you watched I mean, the movie like 20 times. I have a, I, <laughs> here's why I have a two year old. So the movie is on repeat uh, every single day. So at the end of the movie, right? Like the, yep. the obsession is he wants to win the, the Piston Cup, right? And at the end of the movie, he had got, for those that haven't watched it, spoiler alert, um, <laughs> at the end of the movie, he has a chance to actually win it. But then one of the competitors has an accident and what he does is like he pulls the brakes at the very end and then drives back and push this guy past the finish line, like not finish him, not finishing first, but third. But then, you know, it was the, the great, the, the great transformation from that obsession to that cop to a better racer or a better person. Right. Um, so it's really, once we start distilling those things, it's pretty awesome because it opens your eyes to new formats. Now, I think this is probably where Fonzie wanted to go. Like for your, uh, for your how to take over the world mm -hmm. show, like what's your, how do you create your own narrative? Like you started that from from scratch. So how was that process for you? Because in my mind, when I think about that, it's it feels like a lot of heavy lifting, <laughs> to com be completely honest. And maybe it's because my capacity is spent in different areas of the business as well, right? So I'm reducing friction in some areas to be able to execute on others. But for you, when you developed your, your own show, and I feel like it, 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 people have to go listen to it. I, we'll put the link right below. It, it, to me, it was very unique, right? And it was like, oh, this is so cool. This, this is so him. Like, it, I, I'd never seen a show like that before. So I'm like, okay, how do you how do you come up with that? Was like, you sat down one day and be like, I'm going to do this once? Or have you developed it over time? Yeah, so I definitely have developed it over time. The first time I did it, I literally, I, I didn't have any framework for how to develop a story. I just kind of like read the biography and then just kind of told the story. Uh, over time, <laughs> I have developed a framework. I think Hero's Journey is great. Uh, I, I, I think a lot of people, sh more people should read Joseph Campbell and should implement Hero's Journey. Now, I'm a little bit constrained because I don't actually get to develop my own stories, right? I'm telling yeah. other people's stories. Uh, real history. Um, and so uh, the story is what it is. And if it doesn't follow hero's journey, it doesn't follow hero's journey per se. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> obviously they're like, there's always some overlap, but it's not always airtight. Absolutely. My main framework that I use is, uh, and I can go through a little more process of how I actually tactically do it. But, but the overall framework I use is I read these biographies and as I do, there are usually four or five moments where like a light bulb goes off and either mm -hmm. I'm just reading it and I'm like, this is so cool. And I just like, can't wait to tell, like I literally am just looking around, like, is my wife nearby? Can I tell her this? Like, can I tell her the story? This is so cool. I want to tell someone about this. Uh, mm -hmm. Or it's an insight. I make a connection and I go, whoa, like this is going to change my life. I'm going to do mm -hmm. things differently because of what I'm learning about this person. And so then I build everything around those light bulb moments of mm. I give them space to breathe uh, a little bit, but also like I then I go through, I kind of write out their whole story, but I, I'm not scared to just kind of yada, yada, yada to like take stuff out if it's not one of those big moments, right? Like yeah. everything in between, I don't want to get too detailed because I'm really just spacing it out and getting you to that big moment i can give you a few examples of that if you want but i yeah, really try and center it around those like yeah. now, okay now now that i reverse engineer like steve jobs one i loved it uh walt disney oh so good and i'm like okay now that you mentioned it i'm 
reverse engineering it and it makes total sense because like as you were like building that story it, in my mind i'm i'm probably your perfect like audience member too because like you know i it's it's first is like something new but also we're in this world where we can apply these lessons right and it's like oh my gosh that makes so much sense why don't we do this and this and this uh so yeah that's one of the things i enjoy the most is that you actually do a really good job at relating that to the day to day. It's like, okay, how can we see that today? What is the lesson that we can learn here, right? One of the, probably the lesson that has talked the most with me has been the fact, and I think you mentioned this in multiple ones, is that all these successful people, they are not just successful because of their, their level of intelligence, but it's mostly because of their levels of their energy. Right, you're like all these successful people just like have very high levels of energy, and they're like go go go. And I'm like, I need to get my eight hours of sleep. <laughs> I need to go to bed early. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> well, you you guys are on the right track because uh, man, this is the most energy I've felt on a podcast in a long time. You guys got high energy. You you don't you don't see behind the table here, but you see the bucket of caffeine that Fonzie just chugged before the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but I, I, I love them and I and I, I personally would love to dig a little bit deeper on that, right? Like that you just mentioned, like if we if we can go a little bit deeper on, you know, some examples of what you've done, because I think it could be very valuable for those people, even if they're doing interview style, I think just knowing the fact that you can have a narrative to it. It's pretty important, right? There's a reason why we always start with, tell me a little bit of your backstory, right? We want to learn where the hero, the guest is coming from. And then, yes, maybe we deviate a little bit here and there as we're, <laughs> as we're speaking. But yeah. that makes, you know, the person listening connect with them on a deeper level. Like, oh, okay, cool. They're, they're actual humans too, you know? They're not these <laughs> just superstars, the best producer to ever grace planet Earth, right? That sounds like a superstar to me. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> so, yeah. I think one of the things you're making me think of is like, I think sometimes with interviews, you know, if, if I'm using this framework of like, what are the big insights? Sometimes people treat their interviews like, uh, like they're walking a dog. Okay. Like they're driving cattle. Like we're just going to keep it moving. And I want the whole thing moving and I want mm. it, the whole thing to be good. Okay. If I have two movies, okay. One movie is good. The whole thing is good. Nothing's great. Nothing's bad. The whole thing is good. Okay. I show you this movie and it's good. The, the next movie I show you is actually horrible. It's awful. But in the middle of it, 30 minutes into the movie, is literally the funniest scene you have ever seen in a movie, okay? You are dying laughing. And then the rest of the movie is horrible again. Yeah. Which one of those are you more likely to tell your friends about, right? You're not going to tell them about the movie that was fine the whole time. You're going to tell them about the movie that was horrible and then yeah. hilarious and then horrible again, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. why those moments are so important. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think people need to treat it less like they're walking their dog and more like they're a treasure hunter, right? Like mm -hmm. it can be awkward. It's okay if you hem and you haw. It's okay if you skip over the boring stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes you have to ask the boring stuff because you never know where like exciting insights are going to come from. But like yeah. you're yeah. just looking for that moment. And then when you find it, you just dig. You just dig, 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 go, 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 go. Yeah. And you just got to get them to say whatever it is that they need to say in order to, for this to be A++ plus 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 content. Oh, that's so good. Okay. okay. Is, is this hold a treasure on. moment this, this, right this, here? Hold on, hold on. This is <laughs> the golden boulder moment. Okay, okay. This is so good. But I got the perfect example, right? So, uh, by the way, you got the title for the person uh, or the, the guest that my wife has listened the most ever. So... She 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 thinks like she thinks that we just talk to the wall whenever we're in this studio, right? She's like, "What do you guys do?" And we're like, "Just talk to people." And we're like, "Yeah." So I've I've tried to convince her for the longest time. Hey, babe, like, do you listen to any of these shows or whatever? I'm like, I don't want to listen to you talking, man. I listen to you talking every single day. And uh, so she's 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 consumed one interview with a person that was in a high school high school musical movie, right? And that was a hook for her. And she's like, "That's it." Out of 245 episodes, right? So today, uh, today we had to go to the bank, and uh, we're in the car, and I'm like, "Hey, babe, like, do you mind if I put like uh, this episode? Um, I need to do some some homework. I need to, to listen to this person before we interview him, right?" So I put one of the episodes that is not your episode, but it was somebody interviewing you, right? So I put the interview, uh, you start sharing your story, and I'm listening here, and then she turns around and is like. 
is this what you guys do podcast? Is this what podcasting is? This is so boring. Right. And I'm not going to say the, the name of the show, whatever. Right. But for her, she's like, is this it? And I'm like, I, I know this is, this is kind of painful. Let me, let me try something different. So I, I put in, uh, the episode where you're with Sam and Sean that you guys talk about the consulting, right? The, the, the consulting episode. And we start with that and immediately the hook like grabs her. Right. And she goes like, what you can make wait and then she keeps listening to the story and then you tell the story about the high rise and the guy with the with the background and the thing and the call and she's like oh my gosh so, and then she's like well this sounds a lot better and and then it's like, <laughs> well, like who's, the, who, who's the guy that you're interviewing is is the the guy with the voice and i'm like yeah it's like, <laughs> the guy oh with my the god voice. <laughs> yes this is so good i might listen to that one and i'm like oh my god yes finally after 245 episodes we got her so uh, i just need to say thank you for that but that explains exactly what that is right like the first example was like this interview that content wise is useful it could be things that but it was like very very flat i guess uh, at that point and you know I, to each their own but maybe that was another thing that, that is attracted and and then I put the, the my, my first meal with your story, and it was all the three of you interacting. It's a little bit more uh, action packed, and then the story and what happened here and what we're gonna do. And we have I have to ask you, uh, how's your how's your venture there? <laughs> if like if you change those opportunities, but like he got he got her invested in a, a person that's brand new to the platforms, right? And that's part of what it what it takes to grow an audience to attract mm -hmm. new people into your thing, and it's so important. So. Ah, oh, this is so good. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, thank you for allowing me to share Katie's story. Cause like, it, you know, you got a new fan, by the way. <laughs> good, good. And thank you for sharing it. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned like that interview that, uh, or it wasn't an interview, I guess, but like Sam and Sean, uh, I was it's on the My First Million yeah. podcast and uh, you talked a little bit about that. And I think Sam and Sean, but specifically Sam, one of the things I've learned about him that's good for finding those moments is... Sometimes you come to a place in an interview and you think, huh, that's weird what they just said. And your natural instinct sometimes is to be like, I'm not going to ask about that because I because it's weird. I don't understand it. I actually don't know if I maybe I misunderstood them. And mm. so you skip over it. Sam has no problem looking like an idiot. And so he's always going like, wait, what? What do you mean by that? And so that was a great example of that because yeah. he yeah. was like okay, you had a consulting opportunity. I get that. That happens a lot. You were talking to a rich guy. He wanted your advice. Wait, what? He wanted to know <laughs> what Caesar would do in his circumstance. That's weird. <laughs> you know? And so like that's he so digs in on that weird thing. He like hits on that. And yeah. that's what makes it so interesting. Yeah. Wow. Um, that That is actually a golden boulder right uh, here. Yeah. Oh. Golden Boulder moment. Uh, approved. Yeah. But just so you know, uh, Golden Boulders are like Golden Nuggets, just bigger. way bigger yeah. and yeah. way awesomer. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you may get we need, to, we need to start sending helmets to the guests. It's like, I mean, <laughs> you guys keep dropping these boulders on top. You know, it has to happen. We got to yes. This is, this is absolutely amazing. And, you know, talking about making it not like a walk, walk on the dog, but more like a treasure hunting, right? This makes me also believe on asking good questions, right? Like, what is, how can I put myself in a scenario? And you mentioned one of these, which is, mm, that's weird, right? Sam's lesson. But how can I put myself in a scenario to ask good questions, dig deeper, don't be afraid of judgment, right? Like, because I feel just like you're saying, like, people are afraid of maybe offending somebody along the line. And then it's just like flatline the podcast. So I'm curious based on your experience with this B2B podcast or, you know, crafting your own, I know you don't do interviews, but maybe you think to yourself, what would I ask to these people that I'm writing about, right? Like, how do you find those good questions that can become the golden boulders? Yeah. So I, I don't host any interview style shows, but I do a ton of, or I have now, now I do it for my first million I don't do a ton of like actual like production work anymore at Caspian. Um, I take more of a uh, advisory role there, but like, but I have done a ton of that, right? Of prepping people mm -hmm. and trying to get them the right questions to create interesting interviews. Um, and so, 
one of those is is what I just said. Like, ask the thing that seems weird. Ask the thing that seems mm-hmm. strange to you. Don't be afraid to sound like an idiot, to sound like someone who doesn't know anything about it, doesn't know what they're talking about. I think the other thing is like, ask the thing that you want to know that you feel a little bad that you want to, that you want to know. Right. Like, um, like if you're asking about, uh, if someone's telling you like, so I went on a date with a girl I met on Tinder last night and, um, and he starts telling you a story about like the, where they went on the date. Like the appropriate thing to ask is like, um, you know, like, oh, you're single? Like, tell me about, you know, wh- like, wh- how long have you been dating? What's your strategy to dating, I guess? Like, it depends on the podcast, right? But, like, the yeah. thing you really want to know is, like, wait, was she hot? Like, well, how did you get lucky? Yeah. Like, how, how did the date go, you know? Like, um, yeah, how did you eat? And, like, <laughs> and, like, that's the great thing about um, a podcast is, like, sometimes people are going to be like, I'm not answering that. Like, I'm not telling you that, you know, (laughs) and that's okay. Like ask those questions. Like, I I think that's a good framework is like at least five to 10% of your questions. People shouldn't answer. People should be like, uh, next, I'm not answering that. That lets (laughs) you know that you're asking good questions. Yes. I I love that, man. This, that reminds me of conversation between Sean, uh, Sean and, uh, uh, what's his name? The comedian. I forgot his name. Uh, he has a Netflix special. Yeah. Yeah. Asan. And, he keeps telling all the time, he's like, man, this is, it's not like a regular podcast. It's like, it was just, I felt like we were just having a conversation, you know, over a drink or over food, whatever. And I'm like, that's how we should feel. Like, mm-hmm. at, at yeah. least we didn't want it to be like this formality of like, and today we have this person <laughs> that has won X amount of, you know, prizes. Like, no, man, let's make this fun. Let's, <laughs> let's, you know, craft an intro that hopefully brings us smile on the guest and then, Oh, we're not drinking here, but it's like okay. Let's let's imagine we're having <laughs> let's imagine we're having a conversation, you know, over over dinner with like some good friends, and I think that makes it so much more interesting. Kind of like leaning towards your personality, like who you are. Yet I feel like people are afraid of doing that, right? A little bit. Like what? What? Why do you think people are afraid of? Let me just show myself as I am, right? Yeah, I think, um, well, I think part of it is like, um, is an actual struggle to, there is a little bit of tension there in that like Sam and Sean, every single time they hop on the mic, they're like, um, what's up, dude? Uh, Hey, by the way, like I was working out and da 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 da. And every single time, me as a producer, I'm like, oh my gosh, we're gonna lose <laughs> listeners for 30 seconds because like no one wants to hear about your stupid workout. Okay. Uh, like people want to hear about business ideas and people want to hear about entrepreneurship and what's happening in the news. Like you guys talk about your workout so much and no one cares. But like <laughs> that is what makes the show great, is that it really is just them talking about whatever they would talk about. Okay. Yeah. So like yeah. There is a little tension there, but usually you th- you should default towards just like talking about whatever it is that you would talk about. Yeah. Um, d- I love it. But knowing that like you do have to balance it somewhat with with we yeah. Have, we have we have a fourth guest here today. Uh, Atlas the Husky <laughs> is asking me to open the door. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dog is like, please let me out, man. I've been here in this uh, hot room for a while. Uh, ben, man, like this has been absolutely amazing. I know we're running a little bit out of time, but this is a question that I've been wanting to ask all day, you know. So, for those listening, uh, if you don't like the question, make sure you send me a DM and yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll got it. But, dude, like, how long does it take you to read, put together these episodes? Like, the work that goes behind your podcast, man, like, it just honestly blows my mind. And how fast do you read? Because, you know, I'm a pretty slow reader and I, and I love reading. But at the same time, I'm like, man, I cannot consume that much information like that quickly or, or what it seems to be. Right. So I actually just found a hack that helps me read way faster, much, much faster, uh, which has been really cool for me. 
uh, because I was, I was, it's actually, I don't know. It's probably sped up my process 30%. It's awesome hack. Yeah. I'll tell you guys about it, but yeah. So I spend, man. Um, so like for Walt Disney, I read three books. One was 600, one was 300. One oh. was, oh, how long was the third one? Uh, yeah, probably three or 400 pages. Wow. Um, <laughs> and so I probably did. And then I do some other background research, right? And kind of like learn about the time. So I probably do like 20 to 30 to 40 hours of reading. And then another like 10 to 15 hours of, well, I, I've, I've been cutting it down actually, which is great. Another five hours, let's say of scripting yeah. and then an hour of, of narrating and now i don't do my own editing anymore but back when i was doing my own audio editing that was another couple hours so it's yeah. a lot of time that goes into each episode the, yeah. the hack i'll tell you that has helped me go so fast is i had to read really slow because i'm taking notes as i go because i i have to say this stuff again right i can't just like read for fun. I to, yeah, yeah i have to remember all this stuff and i like not just like remember it in general but like i got to know the dates and i got to know you know the names the actual proper names uh, and I got to I got to have quotes that I want to pull that I want to say later. So I had been taking notes, which slowed me down so much to take all these notes. What I've started mm -hmm. doing and I actually learned this from Napoleon. Uh, so it's my like it's coming back to, yes. to help me in the podcast uh, is I now just hit record. And I'm recording a voice memo and I just say oh. as I'm reading, I just say the stuff that I'm thinking. Every time I have a cool insight, I'm like, wow, this is cool. I literally just say the thing that I think is cool. Every time I read a quote that I think is like, oh, this is awesome. I just read the quote out loud. And so I have all this stuff saved uh, on like a 20 hour voice memo, right? And then I have transcription software that I upload it into transcription software. It's descript, it's really cool. And then I can yes. auto delete all the silences. So it takes like 20 hours of me just reading and speaking out loud, trims all the silences, it then becomes just like an hour and a half of me talking and it's all transcribed so I can just read it and I have wow. all my notes right there for me. That has sped it up so much for me. Wow. Oh, really okay. Cool. Hold on. I know. Hold on. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And that one deserves that That's one amazing. too. That's amazing. I love it. I, I'm, I'm into, so cool. I'm into the whole like note taking, second brain, subtle casting. I don't know if you heard about all that stuff. Yeah. So I feel like this is a, a key hack for that. Mm. Something I've, I've actually started doing it that it has been helpful for me to like read a little bit faster i i read very slow let me tell you like very very <laughs> slow um I've, i don't want to put the excuse that it's because i read in english and it's my second language <laughs> but you know i'm just gonna put it out there who knows uh but something i started doing is i downloaded this app i think it's called dream reader i'm not 100 percent sure but pretty much what it does is i can upload the it's kind of like uh, Whisper Sync for Audible and Kindle, which you can have the ebook and you can have the audiobook at the same time. And I can speed up the audiobook and it shows me kind of like the reference in the ebook of where it is. And it helps me comprehend and read it faster because now I'm not regressing with my eyes and all that stuff. And I think that's absolutely amazing. I, lo I love your process though with the Note app oh, and just so like good. talking to it and putting your thoughts in there and then condensing everything immediately in one platform i think is absolutely yes. genius okay we have two more two, two last questions but like final reflection of this please if you're listening and you consume a ton of content uh this is probably a great way in my head i'm already like i need to do this tonight because i do consume a lot of like i don't i don't read much i listen but i i, I watch a lot of youtube videos about the things that we do right and it's like oh my gosh this is awesome. Or another creators, right? Like we talked about Eric and Mr. Beast and mm -hmm. like their frameworks. And as we watch the videos, this method is so powerful too, because the idea, the light bulb moments come not as I'm reading, but as I'm watching this video and it's probably very useful to, to do that. And sometimes you make fun of me, but that's why I keep this thing <laughs> with me all the time. Uh, but it's, it, this is going to change at least my, uh, content consumption slash processing slash content creation side so much Ben this was like if if we have to scrap the whole interview like this this <laughs> alone was so worth it so thank you I'm gonna put that we normally ask about an action point this has to be an action point for the people listening and are creating content go consume whatever you're consuming and do this uh, hack that Ben just shared with us so we're gonna call it the Ben hack the Ben, uh, hack. The ben hack 
Uh, <laughs> awesome. All right, Ben, last questions. I know uh, down to the end actually is one question that we have now. So I just answer the other one. Uh, where would you be if you never published? Where would I be if I never published? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I don't know, but I do know where I was before I published, right? Which was uh, I had done uh, tech marketing, like I said. I had joined a startup. The startup was in the process of going under and shutting down. My girlfriend had just broken up with me. I was living in my parents' basement and... I didn't know what I was doing with life. Like I truly, um, like I just, I was not going anywhere. I just took the LSAT, which is the test to get into law school. Cause I was like, man, this all sucks. Maybe I'll just go to law school. Uh, long story short, I bombed. I did horrible. I, I'm a really good test taker. I always, I scored well on the SATs. I always score really well on tests. I did horrible. I was like so depressed. Like everything in my life was failing. And the day that I decided to start How to Take Over the World, my my first podcast, everything has just been up and to the right. Everything has been better for me. And so I would say not only has it moved me in the right direction, but it's helped point me in the right direction. I think finding out what you want to create, what you want to say, what you want to talk about helps you figure out what you want to do in life. And so not only does it help move you, but it helps you find where you want to move to. Um, so mm -hmm. if I had never published, then I would, I don't know. I know I'd be less happy and less successful. That's all I know. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, the reason we ask this question is first, hopefully it's like a little kick in the butt for that person <laughs> listening that, you know, might be debating whether they should be publishing uh if they feel like they have a message inside that they want to share right put it out there uh and then second is honestly a little selfish but for ourselves we're like man when we hear people you know just like you ben that have created incredible companies and have help you know we didn't even we didn't even talk about <laughs> how do you go to two million downloads per month right like that's gonna have to be part two i'm just dropping that out there <laughs> yeah. but you know like it just it, it, motivation at the end, right? It's like we listen to your words and, you know, motivation, it translates like the meaning, the exact meaning of the word uh, is a reason to act, right? If you take the, the root words, reason to take action, right? And this is a reason to take action for us. We listen to your story, uh, you know, how it all started. Now, again, your transformation, right? That epiphany bridge <laughs> story, right? How we turn you into who you are right now, what you do and how you're enjoying life and, you know, all these great things. And at the end of the day, it, it, it helps us move forward as well. But I want to share a fun fact. So in our cheat sheet, as we do this interview, <laughs> you probably saw us like typing something or probably made fancy write some notes. I, uh, we have a code with the team on when to select this light bulb funny, like blooper moment to the micro assets, right? The code is a bunch of exclamation points next to the sentence that I wrote or the, the phrase that I wrote. Your notes are full of exclamation points. <laughs> and uh, it's like, and <laughs> we're gonna, they're gonna have a hard time choosing. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be so good. If, so I just wanna say thank you, man. Like this was such a great conversation. Uh, thank you for, for coming on to Content is Profit. Yeah. Uh, the announcements that we have to make sometime in these next couple of days are going to unite probably us a little bit more. Uh, so I can't wait. I don't know if you know, we can, can talk behind cameras, but uh, dude, it was so awesome. Where yeah. can people find you? Where can people connect? Uh, where do we send them? Uh, yeah, just um, yeah, if you want to listen to How to Take Over the World, just search How to Take Over the World wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to connect with me, uh, I'm Ben Wilson Tweets on Twitter. Awesome. I don't think I'm connected with you on Twitter, so I'm about to go on and connect. You're not connecting with anybody uh, on Twitter. <laughs> ben, <laughs> one last thing I've been wanting to add the whole conversation. Have you ever been told that you look like Loki? Like Tom, Tom <laughs> what's his name? Tom Hillstone. Tom Hillstone. Tom Hillstone. <laughs> as soon as you said, have you ever been told you look like, I knew the end of the sentence was Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Ben, uh, thank so you cool. so much for everything, Ben. Anything you want to add before we head out, both of you? Uh, I just, I had a ton of fun. I seriously did. And not only a ton of fun, but I thought your questions were super insightful. Um, 
And I found, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. So thanks so much for having me, guys. Thanks, man. It means so much. Thank you. Uh, I think that's it, man. I, I mean, I can't top that one. Yeah. Well, uh, with it. that said, thank you so much for tuning to the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite platforms and on social media at BizBrosCo. That is right. And if Ben here helped you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys. Sweet. All right. Hi, Ben. We're still live. We have a small tradition before we head out. Uh, and for those at home, too, quick you're part selfie. of it. Quick selfie. We're going to smile together at the count of three. Here we go. One, two, and three. Sweet. Let's go. All right, social media. We will see you on Friday. Take care. Ben, thank you so much. I know we...